Well, the day has finally arrived. It's time to yank this intake. I'm going to break this video into four parts. First part is going to be removal. Second part is going to be cleaning the intake valves. Third part, changing the injectors and the harness. And the fourth part will be putting it all back together. So here I've laid out all my parts about this brush. I'm linking all this stuff in the description. I got some brushes to clean those valves out. First, I'm going to get this B B12 chem tool. Well, before all that, I'll take the my little scope, make sure the valves are closed. I'll have to turn the crank, the crank pulley. When I get that intake off, I'm going to remove the throttle body, clean it up, and then I'm going to take that intake and put it in this tank that I'm going to dump that entire jug of purple power in and fill the rest with water. Make like a quasi parts washer. And here we go. I got my six injectors. I got a, I think what I'm going to do, I got a used, actually a front and back injector harness from eBay. I'm going to pull back the rest of it as best I can and see if I see any chafing wires. But I'm going to find which one is cylinder six because that was the one that was giving me troubles. And I think I'm going to patch in a new harness on number six just to be safe. And I bought these. Um, I've been been following uh, the clay way he just did a intake removal on a 2017 LFX which is a little bit different than uh, the, the W body Impala uh, he I I asked him in the comments about uh, taking those injectors out he said you don't really need to reuse these fuel lines um, and he said you don't um, he said you can reuse them, you don't need to replace them. I got this guide here from Bosch that I'm going to be following along that mentions replacing anything with a yellow sticker on it. Oh, and I also, it also says to replace this uh, fuel, fuel rail pressure sensor. I bought one of those. Change that for good measure. So now with all that out of the way, let's hop to it. First thing first, we're going to disconnect the negative terminal of the battery. 10 millimeter. Nut right on the top. See, I can rest it against the cross member because it's the negative terminal. Nothing's going to short out. And while I'm at it, I think I'm going to get some new terminal pads, clean these up. Or I might get a new battery. I don't know. So the next thing, let me get this cover off of here, oil cap off. Clean this up later. Set it aside and put that cap back on. So I'm gonna remove this cross brace. Uh, what am I, 15? Oh, I'm sorry, 13 millimeter. Two bolts down here, one bolt up here. This one might be stubborn. I'm gonna go to put this back together and put anti-seize on these bolts. So okay, I got the bolts removed. There's a little harness here that you just push it out. Looks like it's a push-in connector. Now what I'm going to do is take my bolts and just put them in the put them in the holes so I don't lose them. And we'll go set this aside. So, I got that bar out of the way. The 
because I want to take the air box out. So, and luckily this, let me see if we can get it in shot here. This uh, hose going to the recovery tank will swing out of the way. Oh, I love my illumination here. So I'm gonna go and loosen up these clamps, front and back. There's one here and there's one right here. I'm using a flat blade screwdriver. And the math, let's see if I can get in here. There's a little tab on the back of that connector. Try to get it in frame. There's a little tab you gotta lift up in the back here, and then this connector should come right off. I think maybe the tab has to come out. No, oh, it shouldn't come out. I've had this off before. Okay, well, I struggle with that. We'll take a break. Okay, I figured out what it is. You lift the red tab up and then you push in behind it. So, let's get in on that. So, this little red connector, it'll be down. I can't push it in because it's not on. You lift it up and then you push in the center right there and then that comes out. So, Flip the clips on the box. Let's zoom out. Come on, zoom out. There we go. Flip these clips off. All right. We're gonna press this, two little blue tabs. And this should come out. That comes up, pull this little doohickey out of there, and pull. Break your harness everywhere. Okay, looks like I managed to exercise the whole box out of here. I just wanted this. That's all we need out of the way. And while you're at it, you know, you could take your uh, NAF sensor out and clean it. Might not be a bad idea. And if you're unlike me and you don't have a K&N drop-in filter, might be a good time to change it. And that thing, oh, there we go. Not too bad. Certainly not going to clean it. So next up, we're going to disconnect the throttle body. Same little thing with that red clip. Lift it. Lifter, squeezer. She might be stubborn. She's very stubborn. And there's a a little, I think this is the purge solenoid. Gotta move that clip back and he can't do it on here because this is in such a weird spot. And I just snapped that off. Yay! Because you're supposed to push it, and that was my issue. You know. I've had this off before. I don't know what the hell my problem is here. Just do it real ham fisted. This thing will work its way out eventually. There it goes. It's really stubborn. Ha, look at that. Ah, this one is another electrical connector. I think you just. Pull the blue tab out. Or snap it. Boy. Let's pause that. Back to this. 
this red clip pulls out and then you push here right in the center and that comes off okay all right to see where i went wrong with that clip on this connector there's a 10 millimeter bolt right here holding this thing in I learned from my mistakes here. See, this thing should come right out now. Yep. Love dust bunnies to go with it. All right, let's take a peek at what I did wrong here. Oh, that whole clip is busted. The other side was bro. I didn't do that. Oh, I see this lip. Let's see if we can. All right. Little technical difficulties there. I'm trying to zoom in on this. I think there's a, a part of that clip was supposed to go this way then you can squeeze this and pull it out but you know what this is out probably needed to come off judging by what's on there anyway now we got another connector right here and this is a classic yeah this doesn't have a clip in it anywhere no Classic squeeze and pull. All right. Okay, remember when I put in my catch can? There is a connector back here. There are two, actually. We've got the catch can one. I'm just rotating it counterclockwise and pulling it out. See that in the camera? And there's one more right here. You pull a little red tab off and then it should squeeze. Oh, my knee's starting to hurt. Ah. Okay, this red clip comes out. It looks like it was busted before. That's broke. Then you push in on the white part in the front. And you try to, and this thing should come right off. Can't get a good grip on it, though. There. Now that hose is out. And I believe we are home free. There are no other connections on this. So now all we have left are these six 13 millimeter bolts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, got the bolts loose. I'm gonna put them back in order. They look the same. I'm gonna set them on my table over here for the semblance of order of how I took them out. Oh, these back ones are definitely longer. And I'm gonna, let's back this up a little bit here. I'm gonna pull this little, baffle out of the way there. Now we can see the high pressure fuel lines. There's your Schrader. There's your fuel pressure. The rail sensor. Okay. I think we're clear. You know what? I missed one bolt back here. Looks like a 10 millimeter. I totally missed that one. One little sucker right here behind the power steering pump reservoir. Yep. Oh, what did we hold up on? Oh, that slides under the reservoir. I see. Put that camera in over here. You got your. This holds one 
that one holds the reservoir and this other one back here holds it too and this slides under it so I may have to move that damn reservoir so I didn't so much as remove it I just took that front bolt off just enough to wiggle it so I can wiggle the intake under it and check it out we are free all right, I'm going off tripod here. Let's get in here. I'm going to have to take a shot back and clean all that debris out of there. I'll try to get up on the other panel here. It's not as bad as I thought they would be. There are deposits, but I mean, they're not horrible. I can't really see down the front three very well. From what I can tell, man, they really don't look too awful. There is a lot of carbon buildup, but man, I thought they were gonna be just caked and these ports are, holy shit, the ports are really coated. I wish the camera would focus on that. Oh, this one's got some built, holy shit, yeah, that one's got some build up. Okay, I'm going to turn my lights off and, and uh, focus on this inspection scope. Man, this phone just isn't picking this up. Yeah, this phone doesn't really show that screen very well. But I have it... I have it down the... That's what, cylinder three, I believe. All right, so the intake is off. That's a little quasi workbench here. I don't want that sitting on the floor. I'm gonna take a T25 and remove this. I think it's a map sensor, I'm assuming it is. It's like a classic GM map sensor. Yeah, he's in there pretty good. Too. That is a map sensor. And I'll just uh, put the bolt in there and set it aside. I'm looking over, you know, you could take this aluminum spacer off here. That is also a T25. I'm going to leave that on there. I don't think it's necessary to take this off to clean it. But what is necessary is taking off this throttle body. 10 millimeter, four bolts. Let's get in frame here. Get out and reuse it. This, I think all these bolts are the same. Two top ones are the same. Those three are the same. This fourth, yep, they're all the same. So you can mix them up. And I will be taking this off and cleaning it. I actually took it off and cleaned it a couple years ago. It doesn't look too bad. I'm going to try not to destroy this. I'll try and clean it up and reuse it. It still looks good. Yep, she's got an oily film all inside here. 
Yep. What you know? It kind of looks like it might be pooling up inside there. I can't get my finger all the way in there. They're not horrible. This is going in the tank. There we go. Fits in there just perfectly. All I gotta do is dump my purple power in there and mix some water in. Maybe I'll do that first and then plop the intake in there. And we'll let her soak for a couple days. gallons of purple power I filled the jug back with water go a nice strong one-to-one -one ratio here I think this tank will be a little far enough let's give it a shot maybe we'll do it upside down oh yeah coat that sucker Suds out of the way, you could see. I haven't covered it all the way yet. I'm gonna put a little more water in there. I don't know. I've been doing this for years. I've been, uh, especially on those old uh, 3100 and 3400s, get those upper and lower intake manifold soaking in the bath of purple power after a couple days rinse them off and uh, I'll hit those with some uh, high temp engine paint aluminum make them look brand new decided I'm gonna throw a little more water in there I mean be a little less than a one-to-one -one ratio there that's a little better a little better coating there. There's going to be a nice layer of filth on the bottom of this tote when we're done. Alright, I like it. Cap it. Let her sit for a couple days, and then we'll pull her out. I realize it's silly. I have the B12 Chem Tool and this O'Reilly's Carb Cleaner, the same damn thing, but I, I don't know. I just don't want to cross-contaminate. I want to use this strictly on the intake ports. Not like it really makes a difference, but... So, I'm going to go ahead and give this thing a... Front and back. Oh, look at that grime on there. Woo! Trying to destroy my phone. Got that. Got that off of there. Making a nice big puddle on my table there. I'm going to try not to force this butterfly open. It's really not a good idea to do that. Springs right back. Yeah, maybe I'll do this carefully. Get the get this crap that's kind of in between there. Just want to be kind of careful in this thing.
Ooh, there's a whole bunch right there. Let's see if I can get the camera on it. She's nice and shiny now. Should have no hesitation issues. See, it'll close all the way as well. Alright, maybe I'll clean up the outside a little bit. We'll call this good. Get some of this grime off of here. That shiny, fresh, clean intake going back on here. It'd be nice to have the throttle body all spiffied up. Yeah, I think I'd recommend wearing gloves too. My hands are starting to sting from this shit. All right. And that wraps up part one. Stay tuned for parts two, three, and four in the upcoming weeks. Thanks for visiting Jack Wagon Garage, and we'll see you next time. Later.